Welcome, welcome to the Cave Troll Cognition. I'm R Heretic here with my good friend Beer Gut Bob. How you doing, Beer Gut? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. I'm about six beers in, and I'm ready to rock and roll. Nice, nice. You, you get good beer over where you're at? Figured it'd be all water by now. Oh, yeah, son. In fact, uh, beer is cheaper down here. There's actually a place right down the block that uh, sells me a little bit, a bit of a discount, even more than the 7-Eleven downstairs. It's quite good. You got a 7-Eleven downstairs. Uh, where do you get your gasoline? <laughs> gasoline, well, let's just say uh, I get my uh, gasoline from uh, blowjobs, so I don't oh. have to go to the gas station. Yeah, I could use some of those these days, but uh, married men don't get that kind of stuff no more, I guess. It's all right. Just uh, just do the good Lord's work, and, and you'll get plenty of blowjobs in the hereafter. I promise you. <laughs> With my uh, 79 blowjobs instead of 79 virgins. Yeah, that sounds awesome, man. So, uh, Indeed. So, man, I uh, heard that you are a an armchair philosopher like myself uh figured uh this is our first podcast or uh kind of a pre-recorded podcast uh just trying out something new figured we'd uh go with the 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 current which seems to be podcasting of uh you know armchair philosophers it seems to be all the rage uh we don't know if uh sargon of akkad started it or if uh tim pool started it uh although most of the credit goes to joe rogan for some reason, I don't know why. Um, actually, uh, actually, Heretic, it goes back even earlier. Do you remember uh, Mr. M. Corolla? Oh, shit. Was he on uh, YouTube, though? I guess I'm referring to that when I'm thinking of the whole armchair philosopher podcasting type thing. Oh, you're thinking uh, YouTube. Oh, well. well yeah, the YouTubes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, I, I, I remember when I first started watching YouTube, it was when... Uh, it was when people were using uh, Mugen. Uh, you know, Mugen it was like an arcade game simulator, right? And they would take these uh, 2D characters from fighting games, and, and they would be fighting them with Mugen. So you would have, like, Ryu from the, the Street Fighter, and he'd be fighting, uh, like, uh, Mega Man from, like, Mega Man 2. And those were, like, the first YouTube videos I saw. I was like, what the fuck is this? And look what it's turned into. Yeah, I mean that's what happens whenever you get a whenever you start adding blueberries to anything, man. It just all starts getting fucked up, man. I mean, there's situations where, where blueberries are fantastic, but when you put blueberries into your uh, your technosphere, it starts causing trouble. You know, blueberries need to stay with pies. Uh, yeah, I remember the one. Uh, what's it called? The, uh, the the waffles one. That was my first YouTube experience. The waffles one. But anyways, man. Um, Figure we can just get into it if you want, or uh, uh, maybe you want to introduce uh, kind of your background, uh, whatever you care to share here before we start, and uh, I can follow up with mine. Well, I'm doing just dandy. I'm about seven beers in now, and let me tell you, I'm feeling quite good. What about yourself? Not bad, not bad. Actually feeling pretty good myself. Uh, I invested some money in uh, GameStop. Just kidding, I didn't invest shit. Oh. I did not invest shit. God damn it. Missed out on that one. Is it true? Is it is it true that those shares went up to five hundred dollars a share as of yesterday? As soon as I heard the news, I didn't even bother looking. It just it just hurts just thinking about it. But uh, but uh let's go ahead and get uh, get, get some introductions going. Uh, this is our first podcast. We'll get into that tonight. Uh, a few other stories I found kind of funny. Uh, I don't really see them being covered in the news anywhere, so I figured I'd share, uh, I'd discuss them, and then we'd uh, let it go into the this uh, whole GameStop fiasco. Uh, I know you and I seem to have different perspectives on it, but uh, how about uh, let me just go ahead and introduce myself. I'm a uh, armchair philosopher. Been uh, philosophizing my whole life. Uh, I do not recommend it. It's quite addictive. Uh, my name's the R Heretic, and uh, that's all you need to know about me for now. Uh, how about yourself, uh, Beer Good Bob? 
Well, uh, I'm just a humble fella. Uh, I like my uh, my beer, my guns, and my boobs, and uh, and God, of course, God Almighty. Yeah, which which God, the the Yahweh, the Allah, or the uh, the Viking God? How dare you! How dare you question the sovereignty <laughs> of our Lord and Savior? Well, it all depends on which one, I guess, these days. Uh, of course, there's nothing wrong with the other two gods they're they're the exact same god as our god right but uh you know what are you up these man? days you gotta be a it's a good question i don't know what the fuck i am i'm a heretic you know well, my whole existence my is to, with to... Me, if i have my double barrel with me right now i blow a hole right through you boy well i'd prefer if you burn me at the stake but i mean not everyone can oh, get what they well. want right well, well yeah i mean again right? uh I'm a heretic, you know, my, my whole purpose, my entire existence is not only to question God, but question religious authority, question indoctrination, you know, whenever somebody says up, my job is to ask why, you know, when everyone, sa when everyone says uh, the earth is round, I say, okay, well, actually, that will make sense because you can see the fucking arc over the horizon, you know, that's one place where I stop, you know, whenever I hear these idiots with their whole flat earth theory. You know, I'll entertain the lizard stuff and the uh, the QAnon stuff. Ah, oh, shit, I said QAnon. We're probably not even going to get platformed, are we? Anyways, but uh, Flat Earth is where I stop. But um, as far as God, well, you know, I guess I'll find out when I meet him one day. Well, uh, all my prayers to you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't know if I'll see you in the hereafter. I might use. I might uh, see you uh, from above with a pitchfork up your bum, but you know that's uh, that's that's your own reckoning to deal with, I suppose. I don't know, man. If we're getting to that point, that actually sounds quite quite nice, you know. Versus what's going on at this point, I'd welcome it. Yeah, why not? Why not? Direct uh, mm -hmm. pressure on that uh, prostate, you know. Get that <laughs> get that uh, get that good old uh, prostate rub uh, via uh, satanic weapon. Uh, that's yeah, exactly. Okay. Indeed. Yeah. Helps helps reduce uh, risk of cancer. But um, anyways, Mr. Bob, Mr. Beer Good Bob, Mr. Uh, enjoys his alcohol. Bob, Robert, it's good to hear from you. Um, so today we just wanted to talk about a few stories. Uh, this is the the first attempt I'm going to make at a at a pre recorded podcast. Uh, if my viewers and you know other avenues uh, and like them, then I will try to go as mainstream as possible before they take down my youtube channel and deep platform all of us so um yeah we, we had some discussions we wanted to cover today uh namely we're going to talk about this whole uh gamestop fiasco uh which i i find actually a little bit concerning uh seems most people think it's hilarious uh but i don't think it's concerning for the reason a lot of those uh wall street bankers think it's concerning but um, let's just go ahead and get into it. Um, before we start, I just want to share a few stories. And, you know, it's going to be my, my, my intention to try and tie it into this whole uh, situation happening on Wall Street right now. So if you'll, uh, if you'll entertain me, Mr. Bob, uh, do you prefer Mr. Beer, Mr. Gut, Mr. Bob, or just the whole, the whole moniker all the way through? Uh, just call me, um, the dude, uh, you know, or, or duder or no, just kidding. Uh, Bob, Bob's okay. Bob's okay. Okay. Mr. Mr. The dude, Bob. Okay. Just a second here. So, okay. So I just want to talk about a few stories and then, uh, tie that into this whole, uh, GameStop thing. So start off with, uh, Mike Pence is homeless after leaving office. And couch surfing with Indiana politicians, report says. So, here's a question I got. Doesn't he have a family? Like, he's got a uh, wife and kids, right? Well, uh, well, heretic, I, I, I don't know the full context of this article. To be completely honest, I, I did not, I did not do my homework on this one. So, but, but presumably, you, you read. You read it before, so can you give some background here? Well, um, essentially, he's uh, pretty much couch surfing. So there's uh, some Indiana politicians uh, that are giving him a place to stay. 
Um, yeah, that's pretty much the background. It, it, it's somewhat of a, uh, yeah, you could say a uh, gossip column. But I just found it kind of weird, you know? Um, first of all, why does it matter? Second of all, um, I guess there does appear to be some sort of aspect where they say that it's a, uh, he's at risk. And that's why they have him uh, couch surfing, right? Um, but that sounds a bit more dangerous. And he's also putting other people's lives in danger. Again, if this is true, uh, you make a good point about context. Context is important. Uh, let's just go ahead and I'll just zip through the article real quick. Uh, former Vice President Mike Pence, who was thrust into the spotlight during the last days of Donald Trump's presidency, does not have a permanent place to live since leaving his official residence at the U.S. Naval Observatory in Washington, according to reports. Though his farewell address, Mr. Pence, sorry, through his farewell address, Mr. Pence announced that he was moving back to his home state, Indiana, in the summer, and he offered no details on the specific of where he would move with his wife, Karen Pence. Uh, we can skip this whole part. Uh, they say that um, he hasn't owned a home in Indiana for at least the past eight years. Um, just two things that kind of got me laughing. Um, this is the, again, it's, I'm kind of defending him, even though he, he screwed us over in the election. But this is the elitist, you know, uh, you know, powerful, all-seeing, you know, villain of America. You know, Pence with his uh, anti-abortion stances and all that. And uh, he doesn't even own a home. Again, maybe there's more context to that. But it's kind of funny that the people that are, that are you know, denouncing him left and right throughout the entire Trump presidency own multiple homes. Um, you know, it just kind of shows, you know, this, this apparent double standard when it comes to, you know, elitism as far, and, and in addition to, uh, you know, well, just elitism in general, right? Um, Pence's are currently believed to be staying in a cabin that the Indiana governor, Eric Holcomb, uses as a retreat, while two Republicans close to the former vice president were quoted saying they spent time at a home belonging to Mr. Pence's brother. So, I don't know, it's just this whole, this whole topic. It's just weird. I mean, this dude has been in Washington for how long? And he couldn't buy a house? Uh, I, I mean, again, I, I read through the whole article, uh, unless they're just, you know, it is Yahoo News, so take everything with a pound of salt, but unless they're just uh, excluding some key piece of information, I just don't understand why he doesn't have a house, you know? Um, so yeah, it's it's just, uh, like I said, I wanted to bring that up, and hopefully we can tie it into the GameStop fiasco. Uh, the next story I wanted to cover... Uh, Proud Boy leader arrested, uh, who was arrested, uh, I'm, I'm not going to read through the whole article because otherwise we'll be here all night, um, but I find it funny that, I don't know what the hell they're trying to do, but it seems they're trying to, you know, create like divisive, uh, a divisive narrative with the Proud Boys, uh, and they have him, uh, they say that he was an informant, right, but he was an informant against like immigrants, which that's fine, illegal immigration, he was uh, ratting out illegal immigrants. Uh, he was an informant against uh, narcotics, which we sure as hell don't need many. Uh, we don't need that anymore in America, especially with everything happening. And uh, he was an informant on uh, human trafficking. And of course, when you compare that to the uh, Black Lives Matter, whoops, I'm sorry. I mean, uh, burn, loot, murder. I mean, shit. Black Lives Matter. My bad. Um,. When you compare that to to those people, I mean, shit. This is this is the leader of the Proud Boys. They're a terrorist group. What the heck's going on here? You know. Well, uh, well, okay. Uh, uh, first, heretic. Uh, can I just comment on the Mike Pence thing first? Yeah, of course. I just wonder how his wife feels because, first of all, Mike Pence is a guy who basically will not see any women uh alone unless his wife is there or unless other men are there right and now he insists on couch surfing essentially <laughs> so do you do you remember that old dave Chappelle bit where he said that uh that if if every man uh could uh get laid in a cardboard box he'd never need to afford a home uh, never heard that one, but uh, that sounds 100% accurate. I would agree. 
I mean, I just wonder, like, what his wife is thinking. Like, okay, my, my husband doesn't want to be seen around any other ladies when I'm not around. And normally women take that as a sign of sort of a beta cunk mentality, right? <laughs> but but at the same time, he is not staying at a permanent residence now. That, like you said, this is Yahoo News. It would be interesting to look at the comments of his Yahoo News article because the comments can be can be quite illuminating on the issue. Uh, but uh, uh, I do find it a little dubious that he he has not had a residence. Uh, as for the uh, this this uh, POC uh, sort of person of authority in the Proud Boys, uh, I've actually heard uh, this person before. He was on uh, he was on the podcast, I believe, the Dennis Prager podcast. He was talking there, and yeah. uh, and he was talking about the double standards about about how he is a person of color and yet he he is a uh, uh, a leader of the proud boys and yet and yet he's uh he's uh, pr- police informer or something I, I i don't fucking know as 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 far as i'm <laughs> concerned as far as i'm concerned the proud boys is a paramilitary group um they i i didn't see much involvement from them in the in the occupation of the capital from two weeks ago like where where were the proud boys i know that antifa were there i know that antifa were up there uh uh taking over the capital that day and that occupation that lasted what less than 24 hours they just took some photographs of themselves and then left where the fuck were i the feel proud like you're being there? generous by saying less than 24 hours i feel like it was only like an hour or two tops i mean i, I was watching the uh the whole stream on D Live, um, the, the baked Alaska dude. He was streaming the whole thing. It couldn't have been longer than two hours. And uh, as far as the Proud Boys, uh, you are wrong. I'm sorry. They were there. They were there in spirit. They were there in the spirit of every white supremacist Trump supporter that oh, yeah, went into yeah, that building yeah, you're right, you're to right. destroy the majority white Congress. Fuck, I can't even say it without laughing uh yeah no there was no broad boys there um yeah they knew yeah, better so, than to stay so, away so <laughs> where have they gone where where have the proud boys gone that's why i don't understand because because his occupation happened uh, i've i've heard that when the occupation happened it was mostly veterans and i know that the and i know that the proud boys i mean i mean r.i.p ashley babbitt uh she she was a veteran yeah. herself uh she never saw combat but she was uh she she did work in security for the air force for quite a number of years over a decade i believe and uh and, and god rest her soul but as as far as the the proud boys i mean where where were they where are they i i, I don't get it so that's actually a really good question but at the same time uh, and i mean no disrespect it's a very stupid question not stupid that you ask it it makes sense that you would ask it um because when you watch the mainstream media you think, oh, well, where were they? We've heard all this, you know, fervor about, you know, how they're a dangerous group and they go come and start shit. Proud Boys are a drinking club. And uh, it's it's become beyond frustrating watching the narrative spin out of control. Um, yeah, I, I've, I've been following them online for a while. Uh, hopefully the FBI doesn't come crack down on me in my uh, residence in China. Uh, uh, for saying that, but uh, I've been following them online for a while. They're a drinking club. They're a drinking club with, you know, you could say radical Western values, but what the fuck is a radical Western value? You, you, you think radically in terms of the scientific method. God forbid you question everything and you also enjoy drinking and talk politics and you like to get in fights. I mean, to, to ask where are the Proud Boys, they're not a political group. They, they've been thrust into politics, unfortunately. They have strong political opinions, but they're not a political group. They're, they're, they're not, for example, the antithesis to Antifa or, or Black Lives Matter. Shit, I said it again. Burn, loot, matter. Ah, dang it. Black Lives Matter. That's what I meant to say. Um, th- to, to compare them like they're water and fire it is just absurd. You know, um, why would they be there? Uh, you know, the most rational reason, uh, which is why they've been at other rallies, is to protect bystanders from Antifa and BLM. So, I mean, that's the only reason you, you would see them otherwise thus far. 
Well, well, all right, but but uh, but I mean, don't don't you think that even though they are a drinking, uh, uh, what's the what's the Proud Boys slogan? Like we're we're a drinking club with a patriotism problem, or we're a patriot group with a drinking problem? What 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 was their moniker? Well, they got a lot of uh, a lot of slogans, but um, I mean, let's go with that one. So, what what is the what is the point that you're going at, though? Well, the point I'm getting at is is they were present at some uh, protests, right? Like Certainly. they were uh, weren't they at the Charlottesville thing? It's a good question. I think so, though, but not in the capacity that they were purported to have been. But you know, we can ha right, we're right, happy anyway, to check here. Let's check it out. We don't know enough about. We can move on to the yeah. next topic. Yeah, sure. Well, the last topic, uh, before we get into it, um, well, just uh, as the final wrap-up of the Proud Boys aspect is, it, it's just kind of funny how I can't figure out their angle. Um, initially, you read this story, and you assume, oh, they're trying to create division with the, within the Proud Boys, right? Um, but then you look at what he's being accused of. He's, you know, and if you read the Proud Boys manifesto, these are things that they would reject in general. I mean, they're they're very you know anti porn, anti deviancy. I mean, obviously you know they like banging chicks and being alpha males, but in terms of like deviant, addictive behavior, it's very much something that if you read their manifesto, you know they're vehemently against. At least you know on paper, you know nobody's perfect, of course. So when you have the president, you know turning in, you know exposing human trafficking, uh, exposing illegal immigration exposing gambling uh and of course exposing um you know what is it Nar uh, narcotics ring um and apparently he pleaded to fraud in a case of stolen diabetes test kits so he was either he stole them he had them in his possession we don't know but the dude you end up making the dude look like a good guy so i don't understand what the hell they're doing i'd like to assume that the media is just incompetent at this point but they seem to continue to succeed despite their incompetence so it makes me wondering if there's another thing at play here and um with the final story uh social media influence uh char influencer charged with election interference stemming from voter disinformation campaign so do, do i have to read the whole article or do you know where i'm going with this this happened in uh 2016. this guy is getting caught for you know apparently helping donald trump win through the use of voter disinformation oh this one really gets my goat this one really fucking gets my goat heretic oh my god yeah. this one makes my fucking boil is it because he's a florida man <laughs> well i believe i believe florida represent Every, I believe that every libtard would want to uh, would want to address, uh, arrest every Florida person because Florida <laughs> is is the swing state that fucks up the Democrats whenever they lose an election, right? Uh, oh yeah. Except for, this, except for this year, right? But here's yeah. here's the thing with this story. Uh, this is the one uh, about the guy who sent the meme uh, back in 2016, right? About yeah. about. Uh, uh, about texting uh, uh, Hillary, uh, texting votes for Hillary Clinton, right? Yeah. Th th okay. All right. I'm gonna try and take my blood <laughs> because I feel. Have another beer before we before you get into it. I feel. Oh, I got plenty of beer. I got plenty of beer. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> th this this is what makes me think that this is a tipping point here, heretic, because. Because uh, who whose votes did he steal exactly? Well, here's the thing. I, I don't even take it that far. I, I just let's say that we agree that he did successfully uh, manipulate or commit fraud. Let's let's just uh, uh, say that we agree with that accusation. Five individuals. This is the same thing as appropriation, right? If you appropriate something, then that means you take it away, and that means yeah. you don't have it anymore. It's like if you if you take a if you take a statue of a uh, of a sitting bowl, and if you put it in your little antique shop in uh, in in Champotong Town in Colorado, it's like oh those those Native American uh, tribes lost lost their uh, lost their statue of sitting bowl. Oh, that's appropriation. There, it, it's been stolen. Those, those tribes can never get that again. 
right? But but it was never really taken away. It, they, it's you know, taken away means you don't have it anymore. So you, how the fuck does what this guy did? Okay, for people listening to this podcast who don't quite grasp the story, imagine this. Imagine, imagine that some fella, which is this fella, this uh, this Florida fella, he decides to make a joke, and the joke is text this number. And this number helps you vote for Hillary Clinton, right? Now, any American with a, a fucking head on their shoulders can look at this and they think, <laughs> well, I can't vote with my cell phone. No, that's bullshit. But he was, he was making a joke that some Americans are stupid enough to believe that they can text a vote, particularly for Hillary Clinton. Right, and so uh, some some angry uh, uh, some angry Karens dig dig up this thing from four years ago, and then and then the FBI finds out about it and they arrest this man because they yeah. believe that he's taken the rights of individuals to vote even though he was just making a fucking joke. So so zooming that out, he essentially used tactics Let, let's let's say that you know obviously we don't think he's guilty but let's say that we agree that he is guilty right he used tactics to restrict people from going to the ballot box to vote uh and not tactics with uh, by uh by physically stopping them but by fooling them into thinking that they did not need to go because their vote was already counted or you know it, there was no need so if that's true, that we agree, let's just pretend that we agree oh, that, yeah. you know, he's guilty of that. Then what the fuck do you call all of the shit that happened in this election, which led to the exact same outcome? I mean, that's what pisses me off. At least I thought that's where you were going with this. The, the, the hypocrisy, the double standard is insane. Like, that's what gets me, you know? And for the record... Uh, YouTube wants to make sure that you all know that there were no cases of voter fraud, which uh, changed the uh, tide of the election, just to be clear. Uh, it was 100% legitimate. Uh, Joe Biden is the most popular president in American history. Um, and any indication otherwise is just uh, white supremacy, uh, white supremacist trolls trying to uh, commit cyber attacks on the Internet. So just before we go any further, I need to make sure that that's clear. Bob, uh, sorry for cutting you off in the middle there. Okay, uh, wait just a second. You said that this is a double standard. Um, I think that this is very different from that. This is beyond the pale. So uh, we know that there was fraud in the election. We know that there were thousands of sworn affidavits that were essentially discarded for this election. We know that already. But Correct. This, they did not turn the tide of the election, though. Just... YouTube wants to make sure I everyone know. knows that. I know, but we're talking thousands <laughs> of sworn affidavits. We're talking about thousands of sworn affidavits that, that have testimony to election fraud. Now, we look at this Florida man who made a joke four mm -hmm. years ago, arrested by the FB fucking I. This is beyond the pale. Remember when we used to have a thing called chat tire? Do you remember that? Does I've never heard of it. Care, care, care to uh, to elaborate? What is satire? Does any does anyone remember satire? There was a show called The Simpsons. The Simpsons uh, uh, was never uh, heard created. Of it. it was it was it was the beginning of satire. No, just kidding. Uh, but <laughs> but I'm talking I'm talking like like a a historical uh, historical record of making jokes about about politicians, about about people, about and you know what this guy was doing, this Florida guy, he was making fun of dumb voters. He wasn't making he wasn't even necessarily making fun of Hillary. He wasn't necessarily making fun of the demon rat party. What he was doing was he was remember Remember when uh, when when uh, Mr. T uh, Trump got a bunch of shit about uh, uh, suggesting that the American people drink uh, bleach uh, mm -hmm. to cure their COVID? You remember that? No, I don't, because that actually never happened. But that's a whole other conversation. But I know what you're referring no, no, to. No, no, I, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm making a point here. I'm making a point. I know, here. I know. Yeah. 
people thought that he was serious, even though he was mm. making a joke, right? Yeah. But now this guy, this Florida guy, he was making a joke, and the FBI thought that he was serious. See what's happening? There, it, it, I, this is a, this is a magnetic. This is a magnetic shift. Now, I uh, this happened on Wednesday, January twenty seventh. Okay, so today is Friday. So yeah. I want to see how this develops. I want to see if there if there is some kind of defense fund or some kind of effort to to help this fella because this is this is sensational. Mm -hmm. This is this well, this is the worst story. This is the worst story I have heard since these hedge fund fucks decided to shut down these uh, these uh, trolls. Okay. Yeah, it's it's a slap in the face among other things. But I'll I'll point out uh, one final point, and then uh, we'll take a quick break, and then we'll get into our final story of the of the uh, gamer stop gate. Um, I just got it figured out while I was listening to you. Uh, you know, uh, rage out on the mic there. Um, you know, this is Trump's fault. Trump was protecting this guy. I bet you, if we looked into this guy's past, he might have some ties with Russians. And how much you want to bet that he didn't get arrested before because Trump was protecting him. And now that Trump's out of office, now the FBI can come down on this disgusting, fraudulent defamer of uh, those poor, helpless Clinton voters. Any thoughts? Well, I did. I, I, I did see a pic from uh, 2015 of this guy uh, sucking off a Russian grizzly bear. But ah. uh, I believe yeah. that has little relation with their uh, particular issue. Yeah, I mean, the, the, you know, it's, it's all the rage in China. You know, uh, what is it? Bear penises. Fantastic, fantastic. Good for healthy. Good for healthy. Tiger, tiger. <laughs> China doesn't have. Those. No, they, oh no, it's the, it's the bear bile. They do bear bile. My bad. I just, there I guess, I got, I got cock on the mind sometimes. So, Panda. okay, Panda. <laughs> I, I do think they also have bare bile. But uh, so let's go ahead and take a, a quick uh, break, um, and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna go into the main story of the night. Um, Mr. Bob, get yourself another beer before we finish. I will get myself a nice girly wine. So that's my preferred drink of the night okay and uh we'll be talking in a second all right okay okay see y'all okay talk to you soon okay and welcome back welcome back to this podcast of the cave troll cognition i'm here with beer gut bob and let's just get into it we were talking about uh a few other stories and uh trying to figure out what was the uh the connection behind all of them and um well figure we might as well just get right into the main story of the night which is the uh the gamer stop gate or the uh game stop gate whatever you want to call it um essentially when the uh, the plebeian takes it to wall street you know my question is are they really taking it to wall street or uh is something else going on you know, I'm 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 just a humble fellow myself, but I'm um, I'm really interested in this whole GameStop Gate thing. You know, uh, people people are calling it GameStop Gate, but in a way, I kind of see it as kind of like a, a GamerGate uh, 2.0 or maybe even a GamerGate 3.0. Uh, you know what I'm saying by that? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I'd necessarily agree, um, but I'd love to hear your your thoughts on that and uh, see if we can't find a, a common ground for people to. To be more uh, open to, you know, consideration. But uh, I mean, I'm I'm thinking it's more of a, I don't want to say a, a, a psyop, but uh, definitely there seems to be uh, elements of just coordination, you know. So I mean, uh, you know, like they they took things that, you know, appeared to be you know natural in the past, like a, a GamerGate, for example. And they said, "Hey, let's let, let's replicate that so we can distract people from what's going on in the real world right now." Uh, you tend to be mel more well read in these areas than me, so you'll you'll probably be able to change my mind. Who knows? Well, uh, it's interesting when we think of shackles because uh, GamerGate was like uh, 2014, right? 
maybe maybe a little bit of 2015. And then a few years later, uh, Mr. Mr. T was elected president of the now corporate states of America. And then about four to five years later, we get this GameStop thing. So it's kind of interesting how this happens in Shackle. Now, I'm not saying that Mr. T was elected because of Gamergate, even though in uh, Mr. Milo Yiannopoulos' book, uh, Dangerous, which came out some years ago, love him or hate him, Milo uh, was kind of a big deal at one point, and he did make a pretty good case about how Gamergate was a major influence in Mr. T's election. Again, I don't know how true that is, but... Uh, this this whole GameStop thing, it's really, I'm not saying all of them were gamers, but it definitely appeals to the more sort of basement dwelling, uh, autist types. Not all of them are autistic, okay? Some of them are, <laughs> some of them are old Joes like you and me, but they nonetheless uh, cr created the situation that's going to have very unpredictable consequences, but it also uh, has a kind of schadenfreude where we get to see, oh, oh, hey, how do you feel about your hedge fund now, you fucking jackasses? This is what you get. <laughs> And then, and then they try and end the whole goddamn thing because they say, oh, well, you, you can play the game the way you're playing. It's like, we're just playing it the same way that you're playing it. Fuck yourself. So well, it's, and, it's, really quite, it's really quite amusing, I have to say. Well, and that's the thing, and this is why I think it, uh, it comes off to a, 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 you know, a Hegelian dialect, if you will, um, which is essentially the whole uh, uh, problem-reaction-solution type aspect, uh, which I, I just... They seem to be just using it for everything these days. Um, at least that's you know I can't help it. That's all I fucking see. Like you know that uh, you know that Matrix meme where uh, where they have Cipher saying, "Oh, all you see is ones and zeros," but instead it's like all you see is false flags and psyops. Like that's pretty much all I see this uh, these days. Is all I see is false flags, Hegelian dialects, and psyops these days. And I can't help it. It, it you know probably to my own detriment. Um. But this just seems like another uh, problem, uh, problem reaction solution type thing. Um, they need to shrink the market so that they can maintain control over it, especially with what's clearly coming. And this is a perfect excuse. In fact, uh, let me show you a video uh, that kind of covers this. Um, let me see if I can share my screen here. By the way, for anybody watching, apologies for the, uh, the ghetto nature. Uh, my good friend here has decided to sh transition over to a uh, brave browser uh, and we're not advertising that or anything but uh, he's trying to get off of all the uh the googles and the androids so uh, we weren't able to use streamyard which uh, apparently is exclusive to only opera chrome and firefox so uh but anyways enough of my ramblings uh, let me go ahead and share my screen here and you'll see exactly what i'm referring to um okay so uh, give me a second here and play. Democratic House Financial Services Committee member Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez today is calling for hearings if necessary to find out why an individual investor is getting shut out of buying, but the big Wall Streeters can still throw down the money. Ocasio-Cortez tweeting, what Robinhood did was unacceptable because hedge funds continue to trade freely. This is a serious matter, she says. Committee investigators should examine any retail services freezing stock purchases in the course of potential investigations, especially those allowing sales, but freezing purchases. That means the short sellers can still play, but the guys who want to go long cannot. It could become a bipartisan issue. Of all people, Republican Senator Ted Cruz has tweeted he agrees with AOC. So I uh, just wanted to point out, so I wanted to share that one. It stood out to me. Not necessarily because what they anything they say is wrong, but because of the people that are that are the, that are being the spokespersons for it. AOC, she came into into Washington. And she literally, um, what's it called? Auditioned for a casting call. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with that. Um, uh, Mr. Reagan does a did a fantastic uh, breakdown of that. I guess you could call it a documentary. But she essentially uh, auditioned for a casting call under the uh, Justice Democrats, if I'm not mistaken. She came into to Washington completely inept. She didn't come in, uh, as far as you know, what I followed with her, with the intention of actually doing anything meaningful in Washington. She came in because, oh, this is just more attention for me. Um, you know, typical ditzy girl like that. You know, I have you know three cousins, the exact same type, uh, so I know their type. Um, 
what one of her first acts um in office was signing an increase of uh if i'm not mistaken congress's salary and when pressed about it she tried to defend how making uh hundreds of thousands of dollars uh was it a year can be justified uh when you know at the same time she's arguing that people are homeless and poor and you know you know all this bullshit you know arguments that are just empty because she offers no solutions so i'm rambling but when she comes out and starts talking about how this is a serious matter that's when i get you know i start raising an eyebrow those are the kinds of things that make me wonder if this is a problem solution uh problem reaction solution right and then i think about what it is they're calling for um and, and maybe you can go a little bit more into detail about it I, I i can i understand it on the surface level but what do you see being uh not necessarily the outcome but what is it that you know the public might call for and congress might be willing to concede on uh based on your understanding of of the issue well, you mentioned her casting call, right? And I'm looking at uh, her frozen image there on the screen and her black mask. And I'm thinking, don't you think she should have gotten a casting call for a role as a Mortal Kombat female ninja character? Yeah, she could have been uh, maybe like a M M Latina or something like that. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Good one, good one, yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway. Um, I'm here all night, I'm here all night. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, sure. So what you're saying, I think, is very interesting because I think we're kind of seeing a little bit of a split uh, on on her side of the aisle because I don't believe that any of them, including her, actually believe a single fucking thing that they think is true about capitalism, about what, this and that. But if you notice, what AOC says about these hedge funds is very different than what uh, Pocahontas uh, – that's a pseudonym for Elizabeth Warren for those uh, uh, uninitiated – very different. There's a stark contrast. Have you heard about that? Have you heard about how Elizabeth Warren is basically behind these uh, hedge fund types? Yeah, let me go ahead and pull that up for us, and then uh, I can I can reference that while you're talking about it. Right, right. So, so, so Pocahontas uh, is sharply contrasting with a young little Miss uh, Castro over there. That's very interesting. Yeah, Castro. Don't I? I wouldn't give her such a compliment, you know, as, as far as uh iq going on there but uh yeah so what is what is the contrast here uh what would you say uh, in your in your in layman's terms well the contrast is that both uh aoc and pocahontas uh are believed to be on the same side however aoc has spoken against the hedge funds even though she probably has no idea what she's talking about and elizabeth warren who has been in this business far far longer and knows how to be more insidious and also has a more uh, experienced uh, vagina than AOC, um, even though I'm sure AOC is a very nice vagina. Uh, I think Pocahontas um, has been around the block a little bit uh, in that regard. And so uh, Pocahontas knows that the special interests of these um, blueberry hedge funds need to be protected, whereas uh, AOC has her own little following. Um, so I don't know if there's going to be any lasting consequences of this, but clearly, these people who say they're on the same side, they're, they're not even on the same page as far as the shit's concerned. So, I'm actually glad that you brought up Elizabeth Warren, because the whole position that I take on AOC actually stems back to uh, actions that Elizabeth Warren has taken in the past, right? I'm going to go off on a tangent, but bear with me. It'll, it'll circle back around here. So, I remember um, from the beginning, I thought Elizabeth Warren was fake as hell. Um, she's just... Everything about her persona, everything just seems so fake. But then she comes out uh, attacking, uh, what is it, uh, internet censorship, around uh, starting around 2018, uh, and calling for the uh, the breakup of big tech. And I was like, oh shit! Like you know, I thought that's kind of interesting. And then when you started looking at what her arguments would conclude to, it would conclude to the end of Section 230 which I'm sure a lot of people want the end of Section 230. But actually, if we end Section 230, rather than just enforce what's already on the books, it would allow uh, people like Facebook, Twitter, and um, you know uh, YouTube to essentially monopolize the market because they'd be the only ones who'd be able to fight, up, fight against the lawsuits and it would essentially uh, allow them to censor whoever they want um, if we were to end Section 230. Um, 
And that's essentially when Elizabeth Warren got on the stage, she started advocating for what would arguably be the end of 230. All of her arguments would, would even though she didn't flat out say it, all of the arguments that she proposed would, would result in the ending of that, of that, uh, that bill that was passed in, uh, I believe, in 1996. Um, which, for those that are, are that are not aware, it's uh, the the gist of it is uh, Section 230 um, allows uh, publishers to be sued for uh, publishing content that is um, questionable. Uh, so, if you're not a publisher, you are not allowed to remove anybody's content. So, right. for example, wow. sorry. You're, you're a, a, a platform is not allowed to act as a publisher is what you're saying. Exactly, exactly. So, um, so again, when Elizabeth started doing that and I dug into it, and this is the conclusion I, I came to, I started seeing a lot of these uh, dichotomies of, you know, politicians going up against each other. It, it just became more political theater for me. And again, what AOC seems to be proposing um, is for, and again, I'm... I'm this is the way I see it. Uh, I might be completely wrong. She might come out as the savior of the American people tomorrow. Who knows? But uh, it, it does come off as, you know, her rhetoric would result in um, the uh, like a, a more harsh control of the stock market and a stronger exclusion of the public of being able to uh, be involved in the stock market. It, it becomes a more elite thing. It, it becomes something only afforded to the patricians, if you will. And uh, it, it essentially kicks the plebeians out of the market. Um, at, at least that's what I'm seeing. So that's why when I see her coming out, you know, opposing, you know, these actions and, and you know, backing, quote unquote, our side, um, I don't see it as a good thing. And of course, it leads into um, what I've been seeing more and more is uh, the Hegelian dialect, which um, for, the, for those that aren't familiar with it, the Hegelian dialect is essentially... Um, in layman's terms, a problem reaction solution type situation where you you create a problem, okay, and then you offer uh, and then people have a reaction to it. Uh, you you it would be the reaction that you expect them to have, and then you offer a solution, a a predetermined solution that you had planned prior to uh, creating this problem. Uh, some people would argue that this is how they got us wearing masks and they got world governments spending. Uh, hundreds of billions, maybe even trillions of dollars on a vaccine uh, that barely even works as far as we know so far. So um, I see this game gamer stop gate as just another one of those issues. Well, uh, I'll tell you what, you mentioned that uh, AOC uh, might be the savior of Western civilization, but honestly, I'd rather just see her naked because I want to <laughs> know, you know, I want to know if she's got that same, you know, you're a, you're a half, uh, a burrito eater yourself. I'd, I'd, I'd like to see if that's crazy. Well, I, I'm more of an arepa eater, but yeah, burritos are also pretty tasty. Uh, I don't know, man. I mean, if we're going to go into her looks, I, uh, I used to think she was attractive, but the more and more I look at her, uh, maybe maybe I'm just, you know, I'm particular to personality. A personality makes someone more attractive or less attractive. And the more I see her do anything, I just, oh man, it just goes down and down, like her level of attraction. But uh, yeah, man, if, if you can, uh, you know, if you can get some earplugs, then I say go for it, man. I mean, she does like gingers. I don't know if you notice, uh, she, she's, uh, I don't know if she's dating or she's married to a ginger. Not that I'm saying that you're a ginger or anything, but uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I just imagine everyone from the South is either a ginger or inbred, right? So. Yeah, yeah. She's either banging that fat uh, ginger or uh, she just fucks other uh, guys in front of him. <laughs> but either way, either way, yeah, I think. I think your uh, your fingering of the Hegelian uh, dialectic here is is important for people to sort of frame all the bullshit that's going down. But what I'm more interested in is uh, now that uh, Robin Hood uh, has basically tried to uh, silence these these groups. Um, you know, uh, Robin Hood has been put in a very interesting position. I forget the name of the CEO of Robin Hood. I can't recall his name right now. Isn't um, he uh, related to Jelaine Maxwell, though? That's what I heard recently. I don't know if that's uh, if that's been confirmed or not, but uh, uh, I recently heard, heard that somewhere. I've heard I've heard that. I would not be surprised at all. Um, they do have a similar uh, nose line, um, <laughs> but uh, but 
uh, if you see the interviews where he is justifying Robin Hood's uh, decision to um, now, now some people say that uh, Robin Hood got a direct uh, order from the White House, which I wouldn't be surprised if that's true. Um, uh, but you can tell that the CEO of Robin Hood has this very shifty look in his eyes, and you would think that as, as he's shifting around with his body language, he's he probably looking at his lawyer's notes because you know he's got his uh, you know blueberry uh, uh, suitcase guy telling him, okay, here's how you cover your ass. Um, so that Robin Hood uh, does not become a complete disgrace. So uh, he, he's put in a very precarious situation, and um, I hope he fucking goes to jail and they throw away the key. Well, for him to go to go to jail, they'd have to actually admit that they're committing crimes, and uh, I don't see that happening. I mean, I, I find it insane that, that at least uh, in the mainstream, they, they seem to be establishing this rhetoric that the people who uh, did this thing with GameStop, that they're the ones who committed a crime. Um, which well, again, if, if, if when you set a precedent, when you set a precedent that what these people with uh, their Reddit account did, when you set a precedent that they should go to jail, then now you can justify collapsing the entire market and sending a bunch of people that, you know, take advantage of going to jail, people in the higher ups. And of course the government can take more control of the stock market. So, I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, the 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 White House could just be using the CEO of uh, Robin Hood as a cat's paw. You know, the idea of the cat's paw. You know, you yeah. you, you you don't want to touch something yourself, and so you use the paw of a kitty cat to 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 deal with it. So so they could try and make Robin Hood the fall guy, and then uh, do all kinds of other weird shit. Yeah, I mean that's that's what we've been doing for how long now? At least a hundred years of that have been false flags. I mean. Uh, there's more than enough evidence now that's come out, you know, about you know how our justifications for going into World War One were were um, overblown. Um, justifications for World War Two. I mean, d did we have to go into an entire European theater just because Japan blew up our ships? No, you know. Um, hey, and by the way, most of our ships weren't even in Pearl Harbor; they were on the other side. Sorry. Don't forget that it was the Americans that uh, you watched uh, uh, Brothers, uh, uh, not Old Brother, Where Art Thou? Uh, Brotherhood of <laughs> Brothers uh, in Arms, I think. Yeah. Uh, that one HBO show, anyway. Band of Brothers. Yeah. Band of Brothers. <laughs> yeah, Band of Brothers. So, so they go directly into one of those camps and uh, uh, quote liberate those quote people in that quote camp, um, and so thus the entire. Uh, American operation in the European theater can be completely justified, right? Because of that one moment. Well, fuck them. That's all bullshit. Yes, 100%. Uh, um, sure. <laughs> um, yeah, I, mean, I don't know. I mean, like I said, you know, you got you got World War II. Uh, you know, certainly I, I agree with um, aiding our allies. Uh, but again, in hindsight... Uh, I, I don't think, you know, going into that war the way we did uh, was, you know, beneficial to the American people. Uh, Vietnam, obviously, that was a false flag. We know that now. Um, what was it? Um, uh, Gulf War, that was another false flag. 9-11, uh, they still refuse to say it's a false flag. So, you know, for the purposes of, of the YouTube algorithm... I must also uh, agree that it, it is not a false flag, uh, that everything really happened, um, that those, um, that, you know, towers that are that giant are capable of collapsing in on themselves, similar to the way a building would collapse if you are detonating it through demolition. Uh, that's just purely co coincidence, you know. Um, but it sure as hell looks like, you know, something sketchy. Um, you know, we went into uh, Iraq. You know, no weapons of mass destruction. I mean, I don't know. I could go on and on. But you see all these all these things that have been happening, you know, around the world. But, of course, you know, I use America as a, as a structure. And here you go. Uh, yet another circumstance where, you know, you have two sides dividing the issue. And it would, you know, any solution that you have would arguably result with um, the government being able to take more control of... The, uh, the economic finances of Americans and, of course, the world by default, because you know, we are at the center of the world in terms of stock market and trade. 
America's number one. Goddamn right. Woohoo! Got my god guns and booze. What's, what'd you say? Sorry, you, you cut off there. Um, I was just about to say that America is number one, and I love my, uh, my god, my booze, and my beer. Uh, wait. Oh, okay. My, my god, my booze, and my gun. Yeah, for some reason, I thought you said something else instead of booze. I was like, what does that have to do with anything? Oh, oh, you mean the one that starts with the letter J. <laughs> well, yeah, there. juice, yeah. exactly. I, I love juice. juice, too. Juice yeah. is delicious. Blueberry juice, yum. Mm. Yeah, not a big fan. Them. I prefer grape juice, but yeah. Okay. Anyways, we're getting a little bit too spicy, you know. I don't know, my ear is ringing from all those dog whistles. I don't know if you hear them. I keep on hearing them all around the town. But yeah, um, yeah, I guess we can uh, we can wrap up this uh, discussion. Um, any anything you want to go into specifically uh, regarding the uh, the details of the GameStop fiasco? Uh, or you know, any final thoughts that you'd like to add in re in regards to this? Uh, well, uh, it's interesting what they're going to try and. Uh... Uh, fuck uh, the hedge funds with next because uh, uh, I told you that I was in that uh, T-Gram group and they were talking about Doge, they were talking about Blackberry, uh, they were talking about Silver. Um, yeah. So I'm just I'm just sitting back and uh, and uh, watching the ride. Uh, I don't I don't think this will end well. Uh, I don't you know I can't really draw out the the particulars because uh, the little you know Billy Bob um, you know stock trader that's been um, hacking up the value of of, of a GameStop and these other stocks, um, which yeah. by the way you can't, you can't buy GameStop anymore. You can sell. Yep. You can't buy. That is true. Thank yep. you, Uncle Sam, for that. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, yeah, just uh, just sit back and uh, I, I I just hope they don't do this to Bitcoin because some of them might <laughs> say okay. Let's fuck with Bitcoin too. But the thing is, I think there's a lot of people in that Wall Street that's uh, chamber that actually do have Bitcoin, and they say, no, 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 don't, don't do that to, don't do that to crypto. Oh, you're talking about the 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 people on the ground doing that to to crypto. That's is that what you're referring to, or? Uh, same same ones that want to see um, these hedge funds, uh, these hedge funds, you know, like Citadel and Melvin, basically um, make asses of themselves. Yeah. 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 I mean, again, I, you know, this is my thoughts on, on crypto itself. Um, it seems like it, even though they say there's a lot of security, there's a lot of protection, it, it can lead to a decentralized system. It, it does very much seem like uh, we are trying to create situations to push society towards a completely digital currency. And I find that this crypto, it's it tends to be a lot of people, you know, trying to get people interested in uh, replacing, you know, their own, you know, hard currency with digital currency. And then once everyone is used to their own digital currencies, they're going to take that all out of the system and say, here's one singular digital currency. And, you know, fuck all of you that have all these other different currencies. We'll we'll we'll, we'll buy it off you for for a uh, a lowered price, you know, Um so I mean, that, that's that's another thing that I'm seeing. And again, I, I'm there's a lot of people that talk about crypto and say, no, you can't do that. You can't do that. But again, when, whenever I see these things being pushed by mainstream um, and then I see, you know, sorry, I see these things being pushed and I see mainstream actively speaking out against them. It, it does make me wonder, like, you know, I used to think, oh, that's just because they don't want it. But, uh, you know, then again, there's that whole aspect of, you know, if you want to sell a pile of shit, what's the best way to sell a pile of shit? You know, tell somebody they can't have it. And, you know, they end up wanting it more. So, because people are kind of dumb like that sometimes. Well, well, they would, they, would have to, they would have to remove the scarcity aspect of, of, of coin. Because that, that's, that's what makes it so appealing, is the fact that there's only so many in existence. Now, I don't see yeah. why they can't just make more. Um, I'm not that bright, uh, so I don't know uh, why they can't do that. Um, but uh, but if one day it ceases to be scarce, well, then we're really fucked. Well, I don't think it's so much the scarcity aspect. Um, it, it's I'm probably going to butcher this explanation, but it's not. So what they do is they have a set amount, but the more people that buy into it, it causes the set amount to be divided uh so you can divide it infinitely 
So scarcity is not necessarily the the, the aspect. Um, what I could see happening um, is that they get people used to the concept of digital currencies like Bitcoin, like Dogecoin, um, and then when they are ready to implement their version of digital currency, which won't be Bitcoin, but we're so used to not using a physical currency that when they transition, they'll say, oh, it's just like digital currency. And, you know, the, the layman is going to look at it and say, oh, well, yeah, that sounds about right, you know, and, and they're just going to take it up, you know. Um, you know, again, similar to to how we did with the dollar, you know, when when we completely went off the gold standard, you know, everyone was so used to not having the gold around that when it was gone, nobody really saw the effect until, you know, we get into the late 90s, early 2000s. We're starting to see the effect of not having a uh, a currency backed by some sort of, you know, physical uh, metal or something. So, um, I don't know. I, I see us moving towards that, towards a culture of not wanting to use cash or cashless society. Um, people will embrace things like Bitcoin and then... The government will come in and give their own Bitcoin and say all the other ones are null and void. If you want, you can come buy, use your Bit. We'll buy your Bitcoin off you. You know, just like you know, well, like they're well, trying that, to do with guns. That, <laughs> well, that um, definitely uh, makes my uh, shake in my boots in a little bit because I was at um, uh, Subway last week. Uh, you know, getting myself <laughs> a good uh, uh, six inch long uh, tuna. Oh boy, I love my six inch long tuna. Um, among sure the, you uh, do all those all those uh, smelly fish. Six inches, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The bratwurst tuna, just just give me, you know, six inches of it. And I'm all, <laughs> out, you know, and I'm all in. So I gave I gave the cashier cash, and guess what? She didn't have enough cash in her drawer to give me change. So she said, "No, sir, you got to use your uh, your little um, uh, cashless uh, thing," you know, which I had luckily. But this is at Subway, and Subway was once the world's number one. Um, fast food chain. So that, the fact that they didn't have enough change at Subway uh, really, really got my head. Yeah, man. Well, that's where we're going. Uh, I mean, you know, my personal opinion, you know, buy assets. You know, I hear a lot of people saying save cash. Um, I don't know. I'm seeing assets is where it's going to be. Buy property. I, I hear people saying buy gold, but like, what can you do with gold? Can you eat it? Can you live in it? No. You know? But uh, if you don't want to go into the potential for a cashless society, then, you know, the only thing that's going to be of value to you is going to be property and, and physical assets that you can trade. So land, anyways, land, man. Will, land will always be the peak premium. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, you know what they said about Jefferson. Uh, Jefferson was uh, cash poor, but, but land rich. So, you know, we have to we have to uh, maximize our land nuggets. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah, and that's why Bill Gates is buying up all the farmland in America. So, God damn. <laughs> Anyways, man, let's go ahead and end on that note. Anything uh, you want to say to our listeners before we, uh, before we sign off here? Um, first, I would just to uh, you know, I would just like to give a little plug uh, to my friend uh, American Grace. She said that we could uh, plug our podcast for his program. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, check out American Grace and Pure Politics. Um, you, you can you can watch it on YouTube. You can watch it on BitChute. Um, you can uh, find them on Instagram. Uh, go say hi to American Grace and Pure Politics, and uh, don't let the MAGA movement die. Okay, don't. Don't, yeah. don't let that happen. Keep it alive. That's what he's doing. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I've heard him. He's, he's a fantastic speaker. I wouldn't say I agree with every single one of his ideas, but definitely uh, he is aware of what's happening, and uh, he gets it. So, you know, I, I, I definitely support looking into him, uh, at least to hear what the other side is arguing and, you know, why we are concerned about the state of America and the world. So... Yeah, man. Okay. Well, uh, I guess uh, looking forward to chatting with you another time. All right. Take it easy, heretic, and uh, don't get thrown in jail. Because right now, <laughs> uh, I I don't have enough cash. <laughs> I'll, I'll I got some I got some property in Bitcoin. Don't worry. In my in my imagination, just like Bitcoin is imaginary. Anyways, man. Uh, we'll chat later. All right. Peace out. Peace out, man.